everyone, welcome to another episode of Posh Teacher. And I am so excited to have the traveling teachers with us today. Uh, they're going to share their teaching journey as well as how to travel on a teacher's salary. We all want to know that. And uh, we, you know, I want to see what, what kind of adventures and travels uh, uh, teachers can do. And uh, I know some of our teachers today uh, have plans right after because they are traveling. So uh, <laughs> we're going to start. Well, I'd like to introduce you to Francesca, Megan, and Shannon. Welcome to our program. Hi, thank you so much for having us. Well, we are going to start, Shannon, why don't we start with you? First of all, tell us what your aha moment was that led you into the world of education. Sure. Um, so I'm a music teacher. My primary instrument is the flute. Um, and I did take lessons in band um, throughout elementary school, middle school, and high school. Um, but then I started taking private lessons in 10th grade um, and it was like a light switch went on like I was amazed at how much I could learn and improve with the help of a teacher, um, especially one on one. So, um, and that that teacher made a huge difference in my life like she made me fall in love with the flute even more and it made me want to go on to teach music to other people so yeah that was definitely my big aha moment. Wow, so. The influence of a teacher really kind of paved your career path then. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Again, Megan, what was your aha moment uh, that led you into the teaching world? Yeah, so it was also a teacher, but that teacher was my mom. Um, oh. So my mom is also a teacher and um, like I've always just loved working with kids and, you know, helping people grow and learn and I think the other big thing for me was always like I felt very like lucky to have a really good education um my parents did a lot to make sure that I went to the best schools and had the best teachers and the best experiences and um I knew that not every kid has that same experience growing up right like um we, we don't all grow up the same way. Um, and so I wanted to make an impact in people's lives and education is one of the best ways to impact people and their, their life trajectory. So um, decided to become a teacher. Oh my gosh. You know, that is so true. I've heard many stories that, um, you know, teachers that have children, they like bring them to school and they expose them so much to the education world that it just kind of becomes part of their own life and uh, so that is great thank you well Francesca what was your aha moment I think I'm sensing a little theme here of it's teachers who inspired us so um <laughs> join in <laughs> yep um I'm not entirely sure like when I had like the aha moment but same as Megan like my mom was a teacher she's retired now so growing up like I spent all of that time in her classroom and was you know like constantly helping her and like there all the time so like I had thought about other careers but I was like no I know I want to be some sort of a teacher um and I think it was in junior high where I decided that I loved music and wanted to be a music teacher because I really loved junior high band but then when I started college as a music major, I was like, no, I don't want to do, I'm not as passionate about music as I thought. So I switched <laughs> to a history major because um, just, you know, I've always loved history from a young age due to all the traveling and like reading so much. So I was just so much more passionate about history than music. And I also had some super amazing history teachers in seventh and 11th grade. So it would just kind of like fell, all fell into place. And I was like, yep, I was meant to teach history. All of you are known as the traveling teachers. What inspired you to uh, create a life of travel? Uh, you know, was there a special time in your life that triggered this passion to, to travel and explore the world? Uh, was there something specific? Francesca, did something just make you want to start traveling? So I think for me, when I was younger, um, my parents, their goal was to get into all 50 states before I graduated high school. Wow. And since my, yeah, so since my mom was a teacher, you know, she had the ability to do a lot of traveling. Like I had the same exact breaks as her. Um, so I was able to start out as kind of a young traveler. So that was instilled 
uh, in me, like from a super young age of, you know, making travel a priority and importance. Um, so I ended up only making it to 42 before I graduated high school, but then I was able to visit the next eight a few years later. And then I think the thing that finally did it for me was in college, I studied abroad in Salzburg, Austria. And that kind of like solidified my love for travel because every weekend I had three day weekends to basically go explore whatever country I wanted to explore in Europe. Wow. And that was also kind of my first experience of planning travel on my own and being a college student, you know, I was on like a crazy, super tight budget. Wow. And um, so just figuring out, you know, okay, how can I see the most in this time for as little amount of money as possible? And then I feel that once I got my teaching job, I had the ability to travel a lot more since I had more time you know, time off as well as money. So that's kind of the specific things that triggered being a traveling teacher for me. Wow. Okay. I need to rewind. So you've seen all 50 states. That is, uh, what was the last state that when you just checked it off the the map? (laughs) Yeah. So my last state was North Dakota, which I actually highly recommend it being your last state because the visitor center there makes like a super big deal about it. Because It's like a lot of people's last state. I think just to get and like, just make this huge deal out of it. And also too, um, I don't count like lane over in airports as like, you know, visiting a state. Like you actually have to go do something because I know there's always some controversy oh. with that. So do you fly to all these states or did you, was it road trips that um, you ended up visiting them? Um, kind or of a combination, a little bit of both. So um, we'd like fly to a point and then we sometimes we do like a lot of group tours. So like they would take you around to a bunch of different states. Or like for some of them, you know, like my mom would rent a car and we'd drive around to a couple of them. Like, especially in the Midwest, like there's, it's basically you drive around and find stuff to do, so. That is so, so exciting. So I'm sure you get this question, but what was your favorite state or in your least favorite state? Or do you, <laughs> don't want to give them a bad rap, but... <laughs> Um, I'd say, well, favorite states are definitely California. Obviously, I live here and there's so much to see. And then I really like New York and New Jersey as well, just because I think they're super pretty. And then least favorite, I don't know, maybe I feel like there really wasn't a ton to do in like Iowa or Nebraska. Like, it's just kind of like farmland. So I guess that would have to be maybe least favorite. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's great. You know, I have heard New Jersey is, is beautiful. Like people sometimes underestimate it, don't they? Yeah, I've never heard um, really positive things about it. Well, thank you, Francesca. Uh, well, uh, Megan, can you tell us, yeah, what inspired, you know, inspired you to, to travel and start seeing everything? Yeah, so um, going back to school, <laughs> um, I, history was my favorite subject. And um, I just remember in elementary school learning about things like the Amazon or the Roman Empire or, you know, the Great Wall of China and just imagining what it would be like to go there. And um, when I finally got to travel in in high school, I got to go to Italy. And I think um, that was really impactful for me because I stood like in I remember the feeling of standing in Pompeii and being like, wow, people were standing in this exact same spot thousands of years ago. And like the magic of that, like feeling of how the world changes, but it doesn't. Right. Um, I like that is never lost on me. And then I think the, the other thing is like my family's really big on the outdoors And so my parents took us backpacking when we were kids and camping and like to the mountains and like on these long river trips and things like that. And so I just like um, got to experience like adventure in a lot of ways. Um, We didn't have a lot of like money to go like places um, on airplanes and stuff like that. Um, But, you know, my parents were always trying to expose me to new adventurous things and so I feel like that spirit just lives on to this day. Since you did a lot of outdoors did you ever um, hike the Grand Canyon by any chance? I have yeah I I did um, I did that like famous 
hike down into to see how Sioux Falls. Yes. Um, so we backpacked in. I actually I did that as an adult though, um, a couple of years ago with my friends, and it was oh, really cool. Many hours. Like, tell us about that experience because I just find that fascinating. What What was it like? Yeah, getting down is easier than getting back up. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, and we were backpacking, so we're carrying all of our stuff. Um, so like getting down probably took about four hours, but then getting up took about five and a half, but like they, um, they do not allow you to do it in a single day. Like it used to be, you could go and hike that hike. And I don't know if you know this, the one I did Havasu Falls has like the waterfall with like the bright blue water. Anyways, it's really popular, but so many people were doing it and people were having to like people were not able to complete it in a day. It became like unsafe, I guess, Um, people trying it. So now you have to have permits and like you have to do at least two days. They won't let you go just for a day. That's how like um, intense of a it is. Oh my gosh. So what do you do? So do you sleep, find a place to bunker down basically? Yeah, they have like, it's inside a reservation, the Havasupe people live there oh, and you so rent, cool. yeah you like rent a spot from them but it's not like a camping spot like where it has like a number and like you're in it, it, you kind of just pick a spot within a certain area oh, um but it was a really cool experience but I've also hiked the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu and I've um I've done like a trip up in Maine in um what's oh Acadia National Park um I've, I've done lots of backpacking trips. They're really fun. Shannon, we did not forget about you. Shannon, what is your traveling? What brought on this traveling gene in you? Can you share with us? Um, so similar to Megan, when I was a kid, um, my parents would take me on a lot of like little trips um, near where we live. Like we would do, um, we would just like spend a week camping and we would just kind of pitch a tent and go camping. Um, we also went to like Gettysburg, Pennsylvania every year. Oh. <laughs> so we would do like these little trips um, very frequently. But then I, kn- I did not travel internationally until after I had finished um, grad school, actually. Wow. Um, I always like had a really strong desire to travel, but I always had a little bit of a misconception that it was super expensive and that I couldn't afford it. Um, like even studying abroad, I was like, oh no, like it's too expensive. I'm not gonna do that. Um, but then I, I finished grad school. I actually finished one year of teaching um, and I realized like how lucky I was to have a schedule with so much time off um, because, you know, like to travel, you need time and you need money. So I'm like, okay, like I have the time part figured out and not everyone is lucky enough to have that. Like I had friends who only had a week or two vacation. So I was like, oh wow, I have an entire summer off. So then that's when I planned my first trip to Europe um, and I saw six different countries um, and I just like fell in love and it was so much more affordable than I thought it would be. Um, Yeah, and then I've just been pretty much traveling ever since, like every chance I can get. Oh my gosh. So um, when you would go on these trips and come back into uh, the classroom, did you bring those experiences into your classroom? Like what what spilled into your teaching life from all these uh, travels that you had? Yes, for sure. Um, I would say the the biggest um, thing that's kind of mind blowing about going to a different country um, is especially if you go to a country where they don't speak English, you get the experience of being the person who you know doesn't speak the language um and it makes you realize um you know just how hard it is to not be able to communicate what you want to say and how much you know it really helps when you encounter someone who has a lot of empathy and is willing to help you and and listen to you and help you figure out where you're going to go if you're lost or, or things like that um so i definitely took that to the classroom um i actually ended up so i teach pre-k music Um, And it's in a pretty diverse neighborhood. A lot of kids come in not speaking English. um, And it definitely gives me a lot more empathy um, having that experience of knowing what it's like to not be fluent in the language that everyone around you is fluent in. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know what? That sums up to that because English wasn't my first language. So I know when I came, uh, it really helps when people are understanding and helping you out and um, have empathy. So that is so great. 
Uh, well, Francesca, um, how did your experiences uh, spill over into your classroom? Okay, um, so for me, since I'm a history teacher, like it kind of goes oh. really well hand in hand. So um, I like to share a lot of my travels with my students. So like I teach both seventh and eighth grade history and um, seventh grade is world history. So I've been to a lot of the places we talk about. So I incorporate like pictures and stories from my trips in some of the lectures um, that I give. Um, and then for eighth grade American history, same thing, like I've been to quite a few of the historical sites we talk about. So I kind of tell them like, hey, here's how it was back then. And then if you wanted to go visit today, this is what it would be like. So I try to incorporate them in my lesson plans that way. Oh my God, it makes, it makes it real, right? And yeah, brings it in. And Megan, um, how, how does your experiences spill over into your classroom or used to? Because I know you you know, have a job change. So tell us about that too. Yeah, sure. So um, I left the traditional classroom in 2019. Um, now I teach online and I work for an education technology company, um, which I love. Um, but I think similar to what Shannon's saying of where it, I travel, I always say everyone should travel outside of their comfort zone or outside of their bubble because it really does just build empathy and understanding of different ways that people live around the world and um, an understanding of like there's no wrong or maybe right way to do things, but like we all have a different way of, you know, driving a car, like the signs and the language and food, like there's no wrong way to, to live. So um, I think that's really important and um, built a lot of capacity in me to, to, work with students. And I think the other thing is um, like teaching online, I um, teach students from like other countries that don't know um, English. So mostly it was students in, in China. And so um, I've actually been to China. And so teaching them is really fun because we can like, I can talk about how I went to some of the places they live or like the in the you know, show them pictures of things that I did too. And like, it helps build a connection um, to my students online. Uh, you know, I have to uh, agree with that. It, it, it does help make a connection when you understand another child's culture and, and where they came from. I've noticed that, I'm sure all of you, yeah, you nodding, that um, it, it's made a difference with a lot of students. Um, so that is so important. Well, Shannon, since you ventured out, like you said, when you were grad school or after grad school into international travel, uh, right now there is people that, you know, there are people that are uneasy about traveling. Are there places that we can go and, and feel safe, uh, co safe COVID travel, if that is such a thing? Or uh, where, where can these teachers go um, right now if they, if they could or they can? So that's a great question. Um, me and Megan and Francesca actually talk about this all the time. Um, so we think that, you know, like safe COVID travel, um, like, can it be safe? Like, yes and no. It's kind of different for everyone. Um, for me, at this point, I'm fully vaccinated and I don't have any health conditions. Neither does my household. Um, so for me, I do feel comfortable going out and traveling. Um, I recently went on a trip to Puerto Rico and it was actually, it was incredible. Um, I felt very, very safe there. Um, I chose Puerto Rico because um, they required negative COVID tests in order to fly there um, and in order to enter. Um, they also were very strict with social distancing and with mask wearing. Um, even stricter, I would say, than here in New York City, where I'm from. So I actually felt a little bit safer, even more so than I did here. Wow. Um, however, that being said, the airplane was not entirely safe, I would say. Like, oh. you know, like uh, on my plane, like every seat was crammed. Um, there were some people who were like taking off their masks to eat, leaving them off for the majority of the flight. Like there's actually an issue. One person got in pretty big trouble for it, actually. Um, oh. So it was fine for me again, because uh, you know, at that point I was vaccinated, like I was not high risk at all. So I felt like it was a risk that was worth it for me personally. Um, however, like if I 
was immunocompromised or had a member of my household who was immunocompromised. And if I wasn't vaccinated, I think it might have been a different story. Um, so if that is the case for some people, then maybe just doing like a road trip or a staycation might be a better alternative. So there is some things you can do then within your safety or comfort zone. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I, I think so. It's just about, about finding like that sweet spot for your personal comfort zone based on your circumstance. Okay. Definitely. So I really should be going somewhere because I still have four days left <laughs> on <laughs> my <right>. vacation. <laughs> so I gotta, I've been like, I want to go somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where to go. The time's <laughs> flicking away now. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Shannon. So um, it kind of leads into what I was going to ask Francesca is, uh, but not necessarily related to COVID, but just over teachers that um, have never left maybe, you know, their state or there's people that haven't even left some of the, the counties around them where they live. Uh, what, what advice would you give them to, to motivate them to, to have the drive to, you know, step out of that comfort zone like you guys mentioned? Yeah, I mean, I feel like travel... It, it can be kind of intimidating, you know, if you've never really left where you lived before. Um, but I think that it's one of those things that it can always be scary, but the more you travel, it gets a little less scary. Um, so I would say, you know, people should start out slow, maybe with smaller trips, like if you've never left like your state, you know, maybe take a road trip to the neighboring state. Um, also like group trips are a great op um, option if you're nervous about traveling. Like I know, um, cause growing up, like my mom chose to put us on a lot of group trips because it was just me and her. So being, you know, like a mother and a child, she's like, you know, I don't want to be around by myself. So we do like, you know, group bus trips where everything's planned for us. So you don't really have to think too much and, you know, just takes you to tons of different places. Uh, so I think that's one good way to ease into it. Um, just cause you don't have to plan anything on your own and see a lot of places. And then you know, as you feel a little more confident, then you could start, um, you know, planning your own trips or, you know, maybe like grab a friend who, you know, likes to travel and have, have them go with you. So I oh feel my gosh. That, that's great advice. Yeah. That is, that is, you can find your little niche or whatever mm -hmm. you would like to do. Um, that's great advice. I think that'll change a lot of people's minds. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, take the chance and, and go out there and just get over that fear. Yeah. It's it's worth it. Like I mean, yeah, I a hundred percent agree. Uh, Megan, so okay, teachers are ready to go and travel. Uh, we are not millionaires, <laughs> and a lot of teachers have a second job. Um, how can we go on these trips, like you had mentioned, without eating PB and Js and or staying at youth hostels? Uh, can you give us at least two or three tips? Um, how can we make this possible? Yeah, so um, one thing I definitely think everyone can, hopefully can do is get a travel credit card. Um, I have not paid for a flight in over two years. Um, I've only used points um, because of my travel credit cards. And um, of course, in 2020, traveling a lot less. <laughs> but um, I mean, this year I've booked four flights with with my travel credit card. Um, so I mean, if you're getting two to three flights a year out of a card, it's really worth it. Um, and then another thing I would say is, is um, for accommodations. Um, Airbnb is a really good option, but the thing that a lot of people don't like do when they look at Airbnb is they're like, oh, I want the whole place. Um, and they miss out on the shared Airbnbs. But the thing about the shared Airbnbs is a lot of them are not actually like fully shared. So uh, that's the tip for Airbnb is saving money. So an example of that is um, my friends and I went to Outer Banks last summer. It's expensive to rent a whole house in Outer Banks. Um, we found a shared Airbnb that was actually um, a attached to a house, but had its own entrance, its own porch, its own parking, its own kitchen, its own bedroom, everything was separate. Also, it was technically a shared Airbnb. Oh and God. it was 
a lot cheaper than a whole like house. So like I suggest people try that as an option to like find cheaper places to stay. Um, but that does take a little bit more research because you really have to look at each Airbnb listing to see. Um, but one way that can help filter those out is looking for one plus bedrooms. So if you look for more than one bedroom, it's usually going to show you a shared Airbnb that's a full apartment. Wow. See, those are things that most people would not know to go that next step. You give someone an idea of what time commitment is it going to take for these teachers to plan a, a vacation? So my advice would definitely be to start as soon as possible um, and like plan a trip as far in advance as possible, because then one, like generally, if the uh, if you plan further in advance, you're going to find some better deals. Um, and then you'll also have like more of an inventory to work with because there would be a lot more air um, availability on a site like Airbnb versus if you're booking last minute. Um, and then you can also kind of like feel free to take your time and maybe spend a half hour researching one day and then like a half hour researching the next day. And then you don't have to worry about like, oh, shoot, I have a flight booked for three weeks from now. I need to just scramble and book oh, something. Yeah. So definitely start as far as you can ahead of time um, and try to give yourself like a few hours to do the research. Um, and if it feels like a chore, like just try to find a way to make it fun. Like, so again, do it as far in advance as possible. So you're not stressing, like pour yourself a glass of wine and just like <laughs> get excited and just peruse these different sites. So a whole experience, right? Yeah. Like try to make that part of the travel. Like, cause you know, like the part before a trip is always the best part. Well, and on the trip, obviously, <laughs> but the trip flies by so fast. So like try to enjoy the planning part um, uh -huh. if you can. And then, yeah, then there you go. Great yeah, advice. I'd love to add okay. on to that Please, too, yes. um, because I think Shannon, you're right. Like, um, you have to think of the planning kind of as fun, um, and kind of as a challenge. I mean, the other thing I'll say about things like doing the Airbnb thing, or um, another like big tip is like all three of us use Google Flights or Skyscanner, which have oh, I love Skyscanner. Yeah, they both have the option for like flexible dates or flexible location. And I think a lot of people maybe just like, you don't know that that exists. It yes. nowadays, I just go into Google Flights and I say, hmm, I want to go anywhere for less than $150. You know, and like, with that, it takes me I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Like it doesn't take a lot more planning time than maybe, you know, just booking uh, the first flight I see or the first trip I see. Um, it probably would take a little longer than the first flight you see, but um, you know, like it doesn't take too much time, but it's more about knowing, you know, what resources are out there. And like Shannon said, looking far in advance, I think is a really good tip too. I like that. And uh, you're right. It makes it way easier than like back in the day, you know, planning a trip. You're right. You can get that information. Those resources are way better now. Uh, actually, well, this leads into um, so your Facebook, you guys have a, a Facebook page. And and that's why when I clicked in on your live, you were talking about, uh, you know, your platform on Facebook. And I think it was phenomenal uh, to see what you're doing there. Uh, Francesca, can you fill us in about uh, the, the Traveling Teachers Facebook world? Uh, what is your mission and the purpose of it? Sure, so uh, we have a group on Facebook, it's called the Traveling Teachers. And basically we've created this community for um, teachers who love to travel, or it could also be like former teachers, you know, retired teachers or, people looking into going to teachers all uh, or into teaching all sorts. Um, and basically we share different resources on like, hey, here's how we travel cheaply. Um, we share guides to different destinations. We share um, traveling teacher stories of like teachers who have um, taught in different countries, um, fun travel facts. And then also too, like if we see a super awesome deal, we'll like post it in the group and be like, hey, saw this deal. Don't know if anyone, you know, wants to go here or um, you know, book this, but saw this, so thought I'd share, as well as um, a lot of people ask questions of, hey, like, I'm going to Puerto Rico, like, what do you guys recommend I do there? Um, yeah, so a great resource, as well as, uh, you know, general teaching questions, too, you know, with uh, this year being so different in the world of teaching with online teaching, shared some resources with that as well. So basically a general good community with lots of resources for traveling and teaching. 
I think that was, this is a great idea. You guys are right on the mark with this. And uh, it's, it's it really, I, I think you guys are going to do so well with this. It's, um, I'm just was so in awe when I saw this. And actually, I have a question. Uh, are these trips um, that teachers plan, are they, well, like you guys have talked about, you're gone on your own or with friends or family. Uh, are some of these trips for is that teachers can plan with students? Uh, do you talk about those kind of uh, traveling experiences? Any of you want to chime in or Francesca? Yeah, so um, I think there are teachers who have planned trips like with their students before. I know there's a couple companies out there. I haven't personally done that, but that's like a great example of something you could ask in the group of, hey, like I wanna plan a trip mm -hmm. with my students. You know, what do you guys recommend or companies or anyone have experience with that? Okay. Yeah, and another thing we yeah. share in our group like regularly is travel opportunities just for teachers, which includes traveling with your students. But um, okay. like we, we've created resources specifically about like ways to save and, you know, like um, grants for teachers who want to travel and do opportunities like that. And then, um, like, you know, different ways to be a traveling teacher. Um, okay. Shannon came up with a list of travel ops. I came up with like all the ways to travel and teach at the same time. And like, so we definitely share things about different ways, not just like let's travel on our breaks, but also just like, there's a lot of creative ways to be a traveling teacher out there, right? So let's talk about all of those as well. Oh yeah, that's fair. Actually, there's a trip. I want to sign up for your... 2022 trip I know you did a little poll yeah <laughs> save me a thought I mean how did the, I was looking at the, the voting you guys had if I'm not mistaken in Bali Egypt and Costa Rica so who, who's in the running right now what are the stats for this trip on 2022 give, give me the dish on this one so Bali is definitely in first place. We are 95% sure that we're going to be doing a trip to Bali. Wow. It will be in July of 2022. Um, yeah, and it's gonna be a great time. It'll be a, a smallish group. I think we'll have a max of 16 people and that includes the three of us. Um, yeah, it's gonna be so much fun. So yeah, I definitely, I encourage you to take a look at that and you should totally come with us. It'll be a great time. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> Actually, has any of you been, have you been to Bali? Any of you, is this your first time? Wow, no, so it's my first time. And I saw that um, this trip, um, teachers can get a professional development or a graduate credit. That's a plus, yeah. Yeah, so it all came about because of, um, I don't know if you've heard of Clubhouse, but we yes. also have a group on Clubhouse. Okay. And in our Clubhouse group, um, a founder of a company called Geo, G E E O, dot org. They um, were on one of our Clubhouse groups. Again, it's um, our group's the same, the traveling teachers. Um, but we just started chatting and um, thought it would be really great to do a trip with them. So we three are not planning the trip ourselves, which is kind of nice, right? Because we have <laughs> someone- to break. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But they're super affordable and have specific discounts on their trips just for teachers. So it'll be like less than a thousand dollars when- I saw the 850, time. not including airfare, but still, I mean- Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a pretty good deal. Um, so like- yeah, all those things combined, we're, we were like, we should just go with the company and who can plan it out and do it for us. So exciting. I'm excited for you guys. And actually, I know some people will ask me, well, um, you know, health issues, like, do you, you know, when you guys travel, um, you know, do you travel with a, a nice bag of, of meds just in case do you get shots? I mean, how can someone, you know, some teachers have health conditions or whatever, what do you recommend? uh in in the the realm of uh you know being healthy or uh you know de dealing with health issues yeah uh, i usually i'll look into you know if i have to get any type of vaccine or if there's recommended vaccine for the different countries um i know like when i did some of my south america travel um, i got like a typhoid shot beforehand because uh, that was recommended by my doctor um and then i always travel with uh 
you know, a variety of, you know, over the counter medication in case, you know, my stomach gets upset or, uh, you know, eat some bad food or something. I always make sure to keep a few things on hand. Um, I know for, um, our specific geo trip we're planning, um, they do take care of if, you know, any medical issue arises, they'll cover that and have people who can take care of you if you get sick. So that's convenient. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple of things I, I use. So one, there's something called Teladoc and, um, I have that through my insurance. I know a lot of people do now because of COVID where you can, um, just do, um, you know, access to a doctor, basically 24 seven, you can call in and you can let them know what's going on and they can give you some medical advice from anywhere in the world. Oh, wow. um, the second thing is your doctor here at home, um, at least in the DC area, I know it's not a special, there are specialty clinics for travel, but you don't have to go and visit one of those. Um, you can do something called like a travel, um, like consultation with your primary care physician. And you would just tell them I'm getting ready to travel. And I would like to do, you know, an appointment with you to make sure I have everything prepared that I need. Um, and so I've done that with my doctor for a couple of places like Peru where I need, and I was going to the Amazon. So I need to get typhoid and a couple other things. And so, um, I called them ahead and said, I, I need an appointment to like, learn about the vaccines I need, et cetera. And she had printed everything out for me and like talked oh. me through it. So if you're concerned at all, I would definitely recommend making that type of appointment with your doctor, even not in your immediate area who would do that type of consultation with you. Okay. That, that's calming. Cause I know some teachers worry about that, you know, and that's creates their, their fear of travel. Or like if they knew they had something that you know, they could reach out to if something happened. Shannon, did you want to jump in? You also had something to share? Yes. yes. Um, and then one other thing that I never thought of until um, recently, like if there's any medication that you think you might need, that's not an over-the-counter medicine, Good like point. anything at the prescription. Um, yeah. But if it's something that you're kind of prone to that you're like, oh, I want to have this on hand just in case. Yeah. Um, usually your doctor would be willing to write you a prescription for that if you're going on a trip as well. Um, Cause I've done that. And now I just kind of had I didn't have to use it luckily but I just have this, a little bit of medication on hand so I guess it depends on your doctor but that's another thing to keep in mind too that's good yeah so uh well I want to ask each of you first what stamp do you want on your passport next so I'll start with Francesca Francesca you had could travel right now and leave right now what stamp do you want Oh man, this is a tough one. I don't, I don't know if I can choose just one. Uh oh. Um, well, you can make layovers. So you can yeah. I, I feel like um, super high on my list of places I want to visit right now are South Africa, Egypt, and Jordan. I'd say those are my top three. Like, if you know, can I just hop on a plane and go anywhere? It'd be one of those three. I'll go with you to South Africa. I just interviewed mm -hmm. a, a teacher from South Africa, and oh, it sounded. Okay. So appealing, mm -hmm. and uh, I just it made me really want to go. So I'll join you. I'll join you. We can go visit. Perfect, <laughs> Angelique <laughs> Jufru, Professor Angelique. <laughs> so we'll visit her. Megan, what what stamp do you want right now? <laughs> Yeah, I also really want Egypt. Um, that's one of the top ones actually in our traveling I saw that. group, which is why I was like, oh, well, mm. but um, yeah, but um, I would say Egypt and Jordan are really high on my list as well. And then um, I also, oh my gosh, why am I blanking? Oh, um, oh Galapagos, uh, I think would be so cool. Um, the turtles, right? The turtles. Yeah. And then, oh yeah. And, and Brazil, because I only have like a few wonders of the world left. Um, oh. and Egypt, you know, seeing the pyramids and then, yes. um, seeing like Christ the Redeemer in Rio are two of my last, the last ones. Yeah. For the me. last ones. No. So you've seen every, so the great wall of China, cause you were there right already. And then, so how many do, how many wonders of the world are there? Seven? No. Seven, seven. Oh my gosh. Well, Brazil, I recommend. I was there when I was like, maybe like 15, 16, and we got to swim in the Amazon and it was super cool. Highly recommend it. And the water looked like you're swimming in Coca-Cola water. <laughs> it was like 
really dark. It was super cool and I recommend a town, Manaus. And the hotel had all these like exotic animals around it. It was so cool. I still remember that. So yes, you should put that on your list. That's so cool. I've yeah. been to the Amazon, but in Peru. Okay. Oh, okay. Like, yes. Hello. So yeah, but yeah, we saw the pink dolphins, which I like will also never forget. Oh my god. <laughs> that was really cool. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, that's so worth it. Oh, oh my gosh. Um, well, and Shannon, what stamp do you want on your passport right now? Um, so definitely Bali because I'm <laughs> Oh, so you won. <laughs> your dream came true. <laughs> um, and then also I'm getting married this summer. So we've been okay. thinking about like good honeymoon destinations. Oh my God. So, um, if possible, we'd love to maybe do Maldives or Bora Bora, like some, one of those places that are just very tropical honeymoony. Oh, like, exotic. Into it. So yeah. Oh <laughs> so we'll my see. God. Well, Hopefully congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Wow. You'll have to document that. I mean, that sounds like amazing. Yeah. Oh yes, I definitely will. I mean, I'll, I'll have my Insta, instead of an Insta boyfriend, I'll have my Insta husband. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And I, speaking of Instagram, it's just fascinating to see all your Instagrams and it's, it's inspirational and, uh, and just keep doing the work you're doing. And I, I know it's a lot of work. I mean, I'm just a little kid starting out, but and it's a lot of work, but it's, it's worth it. You're, you're really, um, making an impact on a lot of, a lot of people in a good way. It's a good thing. Uh, well, I, I mean, I, it's just been such a pleasure and I want to hear your inspirational quotes. I mean, you, all of you have traveled, you really have such an open mind of, you know, exploring cultures and places that uh, I'm just can't wait to hear what your words of wisdom are. So Shannon, can you start us out with your words of wisdom? Sure. So this isn't anything that's like super profound or anything, but my favorite inspirational quote is just do it from Nike. <laughs> and like, that's like words <laughs> that I live by, like when in doubt, just do it. And that's the way that I try to live. And that I think everyone else should incorporate a little bit of that into their lives as well. <laughs> Fascinating, short and sweet and to the point. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, words of wisdom. Yeah. Um, I've been really into one lately. Um, it always seems impossible until it's done, wow. um, which I think is like pretty, pretty true. Like everything true. feels, you know, it feels impossible and then you do it and then you're like, wow. Um, but I have a ring on my finger and I've had it for the past like 10 ish years. And it says, be the change you want to see in the world. Um, and that's like one that's long-term been really um, special to me as well. So. Oh my God. Thank you for sharing that. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Francesca, where's the wisdom? Okay. So I chose kind of history travel related one, but I said, um, traveling, it leaves you speechless, speechless, and then turns you into a storyteller. And that's by uh, Ibn Battuta, who is a kind of back in the day traveler in history so oh my god can you repeat that again that was so nice yeah can you repeat that again <laughs> traveling it leaves you speechless then turns you into a storyteller oh my gosh that is that is beautiful that is what a, a great way to close <laughs> and, and well i just again want to thank you for taking the time to to be here on, on this platform and posh teacher uh and my goal is to just share this with the world and like amazing teachers and uh, I, it's everybody needs to see what you're doing and hear about um, this wonderful projects that you have going. And thank you, thank you for, for being on here. I really appreciate your time. And uh, I know some of you have a car or plane or helicopter to catch, so I won't keep you. We will link all your uh, Instagram platforms below and your Facebook so people can reach out and uh, if they need to get a hold of you. So thank you so much for being on our program. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.